Logan's Run by William F. Nolan and George Clayton Johnson. Part 9. 5. He glides the cave darkness, guided by the glowing flicker of the follower. His quarry is ahead, but it is not wise to attempt a chase in these caverns. He retraces his path, leaves the tunnels and climbs uncounted steps into the head of Crazy Horse. He peers through the right eye of the great warrior, sees Logan and the girl. They are far away, moving through the scrub towards the high grass. He smiles. He has them now. There is nowhere for them to go. Early afternoon. Let's pidge, cried Grey Girl. D sticker J, lift me a day, one of me forever on a PG way. A skirl of lung music, recorder and flageolet. D sticker J, wild me away, me got a never kind of sticker lift play. The pleasure gypsies came in jeweled laughter. They fireballed the black hills. Their devil sticks flamed. D sticker, D sticker, ah, uh, okay. Logan heard the shrill piping as he and Jess cleared the high grass. Down, he gestured her back, out of sight. In a glitter and swoop, the gypsies were upon him. Foot fella, hey! A blast of volcano heat behind Logan. The devil stick chopped the gun from his hand as it passed. Another struck him at chest level. He was down, ringed in a circle of jado fire. If sand fella tickles... Give a he a fry. Logan did not move. He knew of the gypsies. Their first leader had been a full-blooded Apache named Jimmy Walks Like a Wolf, who went berserk in the aftermath of the Little War. Gathering a crew of psychotics about him, he had conceived the gypsy death pact, the ritual vow of self-destruction. No pleasure gypsy lived long enough to see his flower go black. Each was sworn to die on red as a gesture of ultimate defense against the system. They feared neither sleep nor Sandman. They were a law unto themselves. A sword-slim man in white dismounted from a stick and walked from the low hovering vehicle to Logan. Sand fella up, he said. Logan stood up. He faced Rudigo, king of the devil sticks. Sixteen, bearded, white silks, flat muscled, golden curls, a beauty. He reached over, turned up Logan's right hand. Blinker, he, said Rudigo. He gave the others his smile. Grey Girl joined her man. She regarded Logan with lynx eyes. Give he Sandfell a last day wild. The pleasure gypsies were fourteen in number. Seven men, seven women. Youngest, six, fifteen. Oldest, seventeen. The females were satins and brocades and gold wire mesh. They were glitter make and richly coiffed hair, star piled, their nails opalescent and striped with lapis lazuli metallics. They were scented and soaked and smelled of peaches. Grey Girl was the exception. She wore no makeup. Only her eyes were striped in black. She was starkly beautiful. The, maize were, the males were skin silks and kid leather fringe and cuffed velvet boots. They were filigreed in silver stitch and platinum. They were brushed and oiled and immaculate. Two of the pleasure girls came forward, holding Jessica between them. Gotta more than Sandfella, said one. Gotta we a runner girl. Logan took a step towards Jess, but the jado fire still hemmed him. He looked sourly at the circle of devil sticks, their jet-flamed pods ready to sear him if he made an improper move. These were not the devil sticks he'd ridden as a boy. These were fast and deadly, and the thrust from their rear-mounted chromoly jado housings could char a man down in the snap of a finger. If I could break this circle, maybe I could handle them, thought Logan. Just maybe. Rudigo seemed pleased with the situation. He waved a graceful, jewel-encrusted hand. Ty fella, runner girl. Take him on a sticker lift. Three of the male gypsies stepped into the circle to bind Logan's wrists with tape wire. This led him to Rudigo's machine. The devil stick gleamed richly from its hand scrolled leather saddle studded with diamonds, emeralds, sapphires, and fire rubies to the inlay of pearls set into the long stick body of the swift pleasure craft. Logan settled himself behind the stitched saddle, and his legs were tape wired under him. Jess was similarly mounted and tied on Grey Girl's stick. D stickers go! The pleasure gypsies jetted. Logan's gun lay in the grass, abandoned. The fiery wheel of the noon sun blistered its slow way across the Dakota sky, crowding the thin, dry air with waves of shimmering heat. Deadwood was dust and ghost town stillness. The squat, wind worked buildings along the main street had long since been scoured of paint, and their weathered boards reared up crookedly from the red earth. 
A man lounged back into the porch shadow of the big dog saloon, boots propped lazily on the spur scarred rail. His lizard lidded eyes raised up to a distant shout. Stickery! The man stood up, peered down the dust hazed street. The gypsy riders passed the lookout posted at the edge of Deadwood and arrived at the big dog in a bright, chattering cluster. They dismounted, led their prisoners inside. The saloon was lavishly furnished. Velvet couches, ivory chairs, green baize tables, ornate lamps of shell pearl, tapestries and bead hangings. The long mahogany bar was polished to a high gloss. Behind the bar hung a garish oil painting of a coyly smiling nude. Logan and Jess were herded into the room, wrists still secured. Rudigo made his entrance, a heavy saddlebag across one silk shoulder. He dropped the bag carelessly at his feet. From it spilled gypsy riches taken on the raid. Sprays, pendants, seed pearls, ribbons of garnet and topaz and amethyst. In the heaped mound were cabocon stones, onyx, and a gate. With the connoisseur's care, Rudigo plucked out one tiny pigeon blood ruby. He breathed on it, rubbed it along his silk thigh, until static electricity crackled from the faceted surface. Like me, a rubied rock. Took it from a merchantman, he said. Rudigo walked forward to stand in front of Logan. He slowly unscrewed the jewel face from a Borgia ring and held it to Logan's nose. Logan sniffed cautiously and choked. Hemadrone. The bitter smell of the ritual gypsy poison lingered in his nostril. One swallow and a man would begin to die. Unless the victim received an antidote, he would continue to die slowly as the hemoglobin of his blood absorbed the virulent poison. It would take hours and bring great pain. Logan instinctively clamped his teeth together. Rudigo smiled, blinked sleepily, turned away. He crossed to Jess. Two of the females gripped her elbows as Rudigo deftly pried open her lips and poured the hemadrone down her throat. She coughed and strangled. Logan thrust himself at Rudigo, but was driven to his knees by a numbing blow. Sandfella must behave or runner girl die, said Rudigo. Gotta earn the antidote. One of the females approached Logan with a first aid kit. Sandfella, turn about, she ordered. He obeyed. The girl severed the tape wire binding his wrists. Then she gentled away his torn shirt, exposing the crusted wounds along his back. She adjusted the kit, placed it at the top of one of the deep cuts, and drew it slowly downwards. A trail of fresh pink synthaskin formed behind it as the wound healed. She tended his other cuts and abrasions, while a second female treated Jess. Logan was given a clean white shirt and boots for his bruised feet. The antidote. Logan knew he could not take Jess away without it. Even if they broke free, he couldn't take her to a populated area where the antidote might be found because of her palm flower. As a runner, she'd be doomed. But did they really have the antidote here? The gypsy might be lying. Yet he'd have to trust them. He had no other choice. How do I earn the antidote? Logan asked Rudigo. The gypsy smiled, nodded towards the pleasure girls. They crowded close to Logan. Blue eyes, brown eyes, hazel eyes, green eyes, golden eyes, gray eyes, radiated heat. And what happens to Jess? Rudigo scooped the jewelry back into the saddlebag. He then regally offered Jessica his hand and escorted her up the stairs. One of the males said sweetly, Rudigo, he a ribbon, ribbon rider, but also he a lover man. After he, the rest of we. Runner girl, a lucky one. The seven pleasure girls guided Logan out of the main room, along a hallway, into a chamber at the rear of the saloon, a boudoir dominated by an emperor bed over which was spread a pale snow coverlet of imported satin. Led by Grey Girl, the females removed Logan's clothing. They led him to the cleansing room, adjusted the temperature to blood heat, and pushed him under the needle suds. He was dried by warm air currents, scented and powdered. Then he was given an injection of Everlove. In the boudoir, the girls awaited him. They were all golden nude and reclined at the foot of the bed on which lay Grey Girl. She was somber and colorless and lovely. She took Logan's hand as he walked over to her, gazed up into his eyes and smiled a sleek cat's smile. Wild me, Sandfella, she said to him in a husky voice. She ran her fingers along his thigh. Better by me. And the other smiled with her. The green-eyed female said, Wild she, sand lover, then wild we. The first org orgasm was good. The second was all right. The third orgasm was bad. The fourth orgasm was painful. The fifth orgasm was agony. The sixth orgasm was damnation. And where was Jess? And what were they doing to her? And where was the antidote? In the upstairs room, Rudigo lay waiting. 
The floor was spread with jewels and glittered, a lake of gem fire. The cleansing room door opened. Rudigo nodded. Come you, runner girl me. Jessica moved towards him over the jeweled floor, her face emotionless. She wore a flow robe of silver mesh. The gypsy pulled away her robe, pulled Jess down upon him. She was wood. He stroked and petted her. She was wood. He kissed her deeply, fondled her with desperate hands. She was wood. Jessica stood at the long bar while Rudigo paced. His face was flushed and angry. Keep your promise, said Logan. Give her the antidote no. Logan tensed his fists. We both did what you wanted. Rudigo smiled savagely at Jess. Cheated by a runner girl. Didn't try hard enough. Now we use another lift. Pull a tooth of runner girl, said one of the males brightly. Maybe pull a fingernail. Got me another lift, said Rudigo, waving aside the suggestion. He eyed Logan jealously. Sandfella's gonna do it. Logan read the effects of the poison in Jess. Her face was ashen, her breathing shallow. The hemodrone was running in her blood, and for the moment, there was nothing he could do. Nothing. Four of the gypsies lifted Jess onto the polished bar top. They held her wrists and ankles. The others waited expectantly. The play was Rudigo's. The gypsy leader, leader savored his power. He advanced and placed his hands on Logan's shoulders in comradely fashion. Run a girl, she's soon a sick one. Want to you the antidote? Logan nodded tightly. Then, Rudigo handed a short, bone-handled dirk to Logan. Gotta take an ounce of flesh. Anywhere on Runner Girl. Logan paled. No, he couldn't do this. The act was inhuman. And was a Homer human? They were asking him to torture the girl who'd saved his life. But she'd die if he didn't. Rudigo nodded. His smile was angelic. Grey Girl placed a delicate set of spring balance scales on the bar. One tiny pan held a gold ounce. Logan bent over Jess. She had her eyes closed, which was fortunate, because if she watched him, he slit the clothing along her hip to expose a patch of white skin. He placed his hand high on her upper leg. Shielded by his body, his thumb searched for the nerve plexus on her inner thigh. Shifting his weight to cover the action, he dug his thumb powerfully into the pressure point. Jess winced. Then he used the knife, quickly, efficiently. The raw square of bleeding flesh balanced the scales. Logan tossed the dirk aside. Rudigo looked steadily at him. He shook his head slowly. Sand fell a bad fella. Bad fella cheat. Antidote, no. Enough. Logan swept an arm around Grey Girl, dropped to one knee, and bowed the girl across it. Give her the antidote, or I break this bitch's back. Grey Girl was no longer Grey. She was red-faced with pain, her eyes bulging, her mouth twisted. Rudigo stood unmoving, undecided. Now, snapped Logan. His hands tightened. Third finger, left hand, rasped Grey Girl. Disgusted, Rudigo extended the ring, facing. Logan sniffed it, was satisfied. Rudigo poured the contents into a glass of water, handed it to Jess. Trembling, sweat sparkling her skin, she gulped it down. Logan motioned her out. Take a stick and ride for the gun, he told her. I'll catch up with you. Jess limped to the door. She moved through it. A thrum of metal. She was gone. Logan waited to give Jess a proper start, then backed out slowly, holding Grey Girl in front of him. With vicious force, he heaved her back through the batwing door into the midst of the gypsies, spilling them. Outside, he vaulted into the saddle of the nearest double stick and kicked the release stud. The hovercraft flamed into motion. He knew they'd be after him. Trees whiplashed at him as he skimmed their top branches. He'd stay as close to the ground as possible, head into the brush country and try to shake the pursuit before doubling back for Jess. As a boy, Logan had loved double sticks, but this brute took some getting used to. Its power thrust was massive and tricky, and a delic delicate touch was needed to keep upright. Sudden throttle bursts were dangerous, threatening to pitch him from the saddle. Yet his confidence grew with each passing mile. Learning to feel the machine he rode, beginning to understand its quick working habits, Logan felt real exhilaration as he jetted over the country. His wounds were healed and his hands were free. Let the gypsies come. Logan saw them as he topped a high rock, six of them expertly riding his wake. He cut his vehicle sharply down into a baked creek bed, hugging ground, his jet flame searing the dry dust. He had taken Grey Girl's stick, and it was fast. Faster by far than most of the others. Gradually they fell back, and back, and were lost behind him. Logan headed for Jess. Yet one rider clung to him, matching his speed, grinning with each twist and fold of land. The afternoon sun rayed on moving jewels. Rudigo. 
Logan gave his craft full throttle, but the gypsy continued to gain, mile by mile. At the entrance to the lame Johnny, Logan spotted Jess. She was just over a mile ahead, riding in a ragged, irregular pattern, weak from loss of blood and unable to control her vehicle properly. Sheer guts had carried her this far. She could falter at any moment. Logan sped to catch her. Rudigo charged closer, giving the wind his smile. The lame Johnny was below, and Logan bounced in the saddle as the swift currents affected his power thrust. He cut to the right, using the bank, and his speed resumed. Rudigo was almost upon him. The king was there, a man who rode the ribbon. Logan had heard of this legendary feat. Many D-stickers had tried it, tried to hug that flexible durasteel cable stretching the storm-tossed Atlantic, but only one jockey had ever ridden the ribbon from shore to shore. Through wind and wave change, cold and blind fog, only Rudigo had managed it. The king. Logan braced himself for attack, and was shocked. In a wash of Jado heat, Rudigo sliced past him, heading for Jess. The gypsy raked the side of her Jado housing. She wavered as smoke began steeping from her craft. It staggered downwards, the girl fighting for control. Rudigo circled, lazily in the riding the air, expertly guiding his machine, playing her. Jess regained partial stability, and he was at her again immediately, forcing her close to the red granite walls of the ravine. Her face held terror. In another moment, she'd be spilled from the saddle. Logan shot up to engage the gypsy, flashed by him, drawing him away from Jess in a hazardous ploy. Logan took his stick up the sheer ravine face, riding the mountain with the water boiling below them. Rudigo could not resist the bait. He made splendid use of his fabled skill to harass Logan, dipping and slashing in at him. Logan was a boy once again, all awkwardness and uncertainty in trying to handle his first devil stick. This man who knifed at him was in cool command of the air, but when would he tire of the one-sided game? He'll go for Jess again, unless, unless I kill him. But how? Logan kicked his craft around, aimed it at the gypsy. Rudigo veered left. Logan veered with him, fixing his trajectory. Full throttle. A startled look on Rudigo's face as Logan pitched himself from the saddle. Down, down, down. The lame Johnny far below. Rapids. Whitewater. Logan arrowed to word it in a long dive. The stick caught Rudigo below the rib line, carrying away his stomach as it drove into the face of the ravine. Logan sliced the water and the rapids took him. Rolled him twisting, sucked him under. He came up choking, kicking to maintain leverage. Rocks just ahead. The last thing Logan saw before he went under again was the faltering smoke trail of Jessica's wounded machine layering the sky. And that's the end of the chapter, so we'll end this part here for tonight.